The plan is simple. We grab the gear, pack the car, and head straight to Ohio. From there, we pick up my dad. What took you so long? <laughs> and drive straight to Elkhart, Indiana. What's in Elkhart, Indiana, you might ask? Well, the Con Summer factory, of course. You're going to take a tour and then test Summer's entire lineup of professional clarinets. So what are we waiting for? Let's get going. Now, the tour was cool. It was fun getting to see the floor, how it functions, the different machinery, and all the various craftspeople at work. But what was really awesome was walking into a room after the tour and seeing all of Selmer's professional instruments laid out on a table for me to try. We are talking the signature, the recital, the privilege, the presence, and yes, even the brand new Muse. They even laid out a couple of the new Supremes for my dad to try out. That was really cool, Selmer. Thank you so much for that. You basically made his year. Now, I want to jump into the playing portion of this video right away. So in the following clips, you will see me play all of the instruments back to back. Alright, so there are the five different instruments, but we actually have one more comparison to listen to. All of Selmer's instruments now come in two different versions. There is the standard version of the instrument and the new evolution version of the instrument. The only exception to this is the new Muse which only comes in the evolution version. Like the standard line, the evolution line features an all wood clarinet body. However, the interior diameter of the upper half of the upper joint of the instrument has been enlarged and then combined with resin before the final boring has been completed. The goal of this process is to prevent cracks in the upper joint of the instrument. Selmer also boasts that the evolution system provides a whole host of additional benefits. But what I am most interested in, and what I think most people are most interested in, is does it change the sound? Joshua Gardner at Arizona State University did a very in-depth, detailed scientific comparative study featuring an evolution privilege and a standard privilege. He found that there were no notable differences in the sound between the two lines. But while I had both versions available, I wanted to do a mini comparison for myself. So here are the two instruments played back to back.
All right, so I've listened to these two clips a lot, and while there is a subtle shift in sound, to me it's the kind of shift that can occur between any two instruments of the same type rather than from the resin insert specifically. Or it could be from a slightly shifted reed or any other number of small factors. At the end of the day, both instruments still definitely sound like privileges. So my takeaway is this. I would have no problem playing on an evolution system instrument. It seems like a scenario with all pros and no cons. Plus, it seems like that's the direction Selmer wants to move in anyway, and I really can't say I mind. So now that I've had the chance to hear everything, it's time for my super short rundown on how I felt about all of the clarinets. And just as a side note, Selmer has not sponsored this video in any way. They were very kind to have me out to the factory and showroom, but my thoughts are ultimately my own. All right, so let's start with the signature. I really like this model. Summer says it's more resistant than the other instruments, and I found that to be true. However, I did not find the increased resistance to be overly egregious. And the instrument itself has a very beautiful, unique sound. To me, it creates a sound with a lot of body and fundamental. However, soaring above that bass is an almost ethereal ring. It may not be as colorful or sparkly as other instruments, but it definitely has its own appeal. Moving on, we have the recital, and I have to say that this instrument is thick. The photos online do not do it justice. Look at how the recital body compares to my Buffet Tosca. That's a crazy difference, and you can definitely feel it too. It's heavy, and because of the added width, the placement of the throat tone keys feels a little different. It definitely took me a few minutes to get used to their positioning. That being said, the sound surprised me. When instrument bodies start getting really thick, they can oftentimes start to sound a little dead or muted. However, with this instrument, while I felt it could be round and more covered, it was also capable of producing a very colorful sound when I leaned into it. It definitely took me by surprise. And as a side note, while they don't specifically talk about it on their product page, I also felt that this instrument was some somewhat more resistant like the signature. Next up, we have the privilege. While every instrument in the lineup had its own intonation tendencies, which in general were more than manageable, the intonation on this instrument stuck out to me as being particularly good, especially the throat tone E and F, which I am used to having to add additional keys to to bring them closer to pitch. It came as no surprise to me when I later found out that Selmer had made it a special point to work on the intonation in this part of the instrument. With my setup, the sound was definitely more on the darker, sultry side overall. I found that the instrument held the sound quite well, especially when I put more air into it. And because of this, I feel like you could play the instrument in any size ensemble. However, with that being said, and with my setup, the sound definitely struck me as being more suited towards blending with a section than creating the biggest, most projecting sound possible. The fourth horn I tried was the Prezant. This was the least expensive of the five instruments I tried. Despite the reduced price, I felt the instrument was definitely capable of standing in the same class as the other four instruments. I was extremely impressed by how even, focused, and homogenous the sound was throughout the entire range of the instrument. I think that some people may feel it lacks some of the more unique sound characteristics present within the other instruments, and perhaps it isn't as capable of quite the range of colors or dynamic extremes as some of the other instruments, but the ease with which this instrument created a beautiful, pure sound definitely gives it a special place in the lineup. And finally, the instrument that many of you are probably the most interested in, the brand new Selmer Muse. Now again, this isn't a full review, and that's probably a good thing because the instrument I tried at the Selmer factory was having some keywork issues that day, and the version of the instrument I tried also did not have the low ENF correction mechanism. I'm going to be honest, when I tried this instrument in the showroom, I didn't really know what to make of it. It produced a nice sound to be sure, but I didn't really know how or where it was supposed to fit into the current Selmer lineup. It wasn't until I got back home and listened to the recordings that I had made that I understood. To me, the Muse is by far the most colorful of all the Selmer instruments. It's such a divergence from the rest of the Selmer lineup that I can't help but feel that it was probably created to more directly compete with brands like Buffet Crampon or Yamaha. I think the Muse is definitely worth checking out as an additional option for anyone who otherwise would have been focused on offerings from the aforementioned brands. All of that being said, and since it will be an option, I probably wouldn't buy this instrument without the low E and F correction key. At least with my setup, both notes could have used the help to get the instrument up to pitch. And there we have it. That's the overview on all the Pro Selmer clarinets. 
Don't forget to tell me which one you like the best down in the comments below, as well as your thoughts on these standard versus evolution models. Hearing all of your different preferences is the most fun part of these projects for me, so it'd be really great to hear what you all think. A quick shout out to Quentin Robinson. He's been working on piano and clarinet transcriptions for some of the various Mendelssohn songs without words. Two of those melodies are what I use for today's playing samples. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down in the comment section below. Until next time, happy practicing.